So today we're going to continue in our sermon series called Music to My Ears. And this is a sermon series in which we're looking at those songs, both ancient and modern, that really shape our faith. We're looking at the, the theology, the lyrics, the history, um, the scriptures that these songs are based on. Because our central idea of this sermon series is this, is that singing, whether out loud or in our hearts, is a way in which we practice our faith. And the scripture that we're, we're camping out in is in Ephesians chapter 5, and we'll have it on the screens. In Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 15, it says this, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as, a, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but instead be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Now, I love this book of Ephesians, and it's really this letter of Ephesians. And, and I like it because it's, it's a general letter. It's an encyclical letter. So if you look on, uh, we have a, a slide of our map here that in in the ancient world, we see kind of, we see Italy and we see Greece. And if you see this area, it's called the Aegean Sea. Now, we kind of call this the Christian Sea because all around that, you see these places in which Paul has taken missionary journeys. He planted churches. You see, you see Athens there, Thessalonica, Philippi, and you see Ephesus right on this side. And, and in our early manuscripts, we don't have in Ephesus at the beginning of this letter because it was meant to be circled around this whole Christian Sea area, this whole area around here was to get this letter because this letter is filled with some, some general ideas for the church, some ways to think about God, how we live together, how we live out our faith together. And that's where we come to this curious line in, in chapter five and in verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, and make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now, as I was, I was thinking about this verse over the last couple of weeks, then this part about the days being evil was one that, that grabbed me and stood out to me, and I just knew that I was going to have to unpack here as we, as we looked at this scripture and looked at what it meant for us to sing together, because the question that kept coming to my mind is, is, is what is Paul, who wrote this letter to these churches and all of them to live this out and for us to live this out in our everyday lives, what could possibly be the connection between making the most of every opportunity, evil days, and singing? Because in a lot of ways, when we think about singing, we, we would think about singing in terms of maybe celebration, maybe happy times. Sometimes we sing in, in, in times that we're sad or, or we need a little bit of encouragement. But what would singing have to do with making the most of every opportunity and evil days? What is this really all about? So when we think about this word evil, the word evil is paneras, paneras in Greek. And this is what it means. I think it will help us think about what evil is, not only in our day, but maybe what, what Paul was talking about with evil. But evil in this way is full of annoyances. Sometimes that's pretty evil when we have annoyances in our lives. Maybe hardships, perils, bad conditions, hurtful. That's what we mean when we talk about evil. And when I was thinking about this over the last couple of weeks, I was thinking, I'm going to really need to unpack this. Because oftentimes, maybe you and I, we get lured away from really thinking about the evil all around us. We try to insulate ourselves from it. We try to, to keep ourselves safe and secure from it, and rightly so. But then things over the last couple of weeks happen with Dayton and El Paso. And it reminds us that our days truly are filled with hardships, peril, difficulty, hurt, questions, tragedy. And as I was thinking about this, I was, I was thinking that my very first Sunday at Table of Grace was the Sunday after the shootings that we had here in Dallas. And in all the ways that we started at Table of Grace and that I wanted my first Sunday to go, the way that we had to start 
We didn't start with a song, with a celebration, but we started with prayer. That I came up on stage, my name is Chad, I'm your new pastor, and we need to pray because our world is broken. And over the, the last few years that I've been here, that's just being reinforced more and more and more that our world is not as it should be, that our world is broken, that there's darkness all around us, and that we need the light. But you and I were never meant just to stand by and observe all this. You and I were never meant just to let all this go, that you and I have a part to play in this, that we get to make the most of every opportunity because our world does not have to stay that way. You and I get to make a difference. And that's what we see in this sentence, make the most of every opportunity. Because the Greek word for opportunity is the word kairos. And this is one of my favorite Greek words. It's one of the most dynamic words. And if you're, if you're taking notes, if you're writing down, write down the word kairos, because you need to know this word. This word kairos is a word for time in Greek, but it's not chronological time. This is the word in which, in which everything comes together. There's a culmination of events that everything comes together to this right time, this right moment. It's a kairos moment. It's a kairos time in which you and I live, in which you and I have our lives. This is the appointed time. It's the convergence of all things and that you and I have a choice because this is the way I think about it. That you and I have one life and our lives are not an accident. Our lives matter. No matter how you came into this world, your life is not an accident. No matter how you've lived your life, your life is not an accident. No matter what you think about yourself, your life is not an accident. You matter. And you matter to the times in which you live. And that's what Kairos tells us. To make the most of the time in which we live. The evil, the hardship, the darkness, but also the light, the goodness, the blessing, the moments. Make the most of every opportunity. And this is a choice that you and I have to make the most of every opportunity. It's a choice not only to change your life, but the lives of those around you. Because when we begin to really understand this idea of kairos, when we begin to live into this idea of kairos, that, that God has, has placed us in this moment where we can make the most of every opportunity, then it brings me to this idea that living out the truth that God wants to work in you and through you is the most important game-changing decision of your life. That when you and I really embrace this idea, when we begin to live into this idea, when we begin to grab a hold of this truth and live this truth, that God wants to work in you and through you, this is a game changer. It changes everything. It changes everything about who and I see ourselves and how we see the world, how we see the moments in our lives, the things that happen. And this is why I often tell people that I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe in them at all. I mean, just this past week, as you might imagine, uh, my family and I were eating at Chick-fil-A because that's what you do. And uh, when we were at Chick-fil-A, we were beginning to leave. And, and then uh, my oldest daughter says, hey, Gary's in there. And I was like, Gary, like the snail from SpongeBob. I'm like, what, who are you talking about? He's like, you know, Gary, we, we used to go to church with Gary. And I was like, oh, Gary. And we'd like walked out. We were almost to our car. And I was like, I'm going to go say hi to Gary. And of course, my kids were like, oh. And then Xander's like, I set a timer on the phone for one hour knowing you're going to go back in and talk to somebody. And so I went up, he's ordering and he says, okay, my name's Gary. I was like, you sure that's your name? And he turns around and we chat a little bit and we catch up. And, and then, you know, we just kind of seen how each other were. And I just think, you know, there's no coincidences. There's no coincidences. There's a reason why I met Gary that day. You often think when, when people pop into my mind, this is, this is the way I think of it. Sometimes you know, I'm, just, I'm driving around or, or I'm sitting in the office or I'm talking to somebody, somebody pops in my mind and I think there's a reason that person popped in my mind. I ought to text them. I need to call them. I need to see what's going on. Because I want to live in such a way, live this out every day, that God is working in and through me 
that touched my life and the lives of those around me because that's what God is wanting to do. Because God is working in this world. And God wants me to know and you to know that what God has called us to is to make the most of every opportunity. Don't live as unwise, but live as wise. So how do we do that? Interestingly, it's through singing is the beginning of it. St. Augustine, the early church father of the third and fourth century, he says this, he says, the one who sings prays twice. That singing is a way in which we pray. And that's what this song, Oceans, is all about. It's a prayer in which we're praying, God, I want to make the most of every opportunity that's in front of me. Now, the song Oceans was by, or is by, an Australian group called Hillsong United. And they wrote this song in 2013, and in 2014, it won the Dove Award for, for Song of the Year. They won Artist of the Year. It won Pop Song of the Year. It was just the song of, of all the years, right? And then, and then over the next couple of years, it was one of the top songs on the CCLI Top 100 Worship Songs and Songs. So 2014, 15, 16, it's number one or number two. It was just a song that seemed to just grab everyone's imagination. Everyone was singing it. Churches were singing it. it was, they, they did a Hillsong movie that was out. It was featured in that. And I think the reason why this song grabbed so many of us so much is because it gives words to this, to this very idea that we're looking at and this very longing that's on our hearts that we want to make the most of every opportunity. That you and I pray, God, I want to say yes to you, however you call me. And God, I want to be part of what you are doing in the world, no matter what that looks like, how you uniquely created and designed me to be. God, I want to do that because that's when my life truly matters. And I know that I'm following you. So let's look at some of these lyrics. So as we sing and as we pray, you, God, call me out upon the waters that great unknown where feet may fail. And I love this because so often as we try to make the most of every opportunity, the reality is and the great fear we all know is that we just might fail. It might not go right. It might be awkward. I might have gone in and, and said, hey, Gary. And he's like, oh, there's a reason you have not seen me in a long time, right? Because there may be times in which we fail, but this song embraces that. It's a great unknown where my feet may fail but it's there that I find you, God, in that mystery. Because you and I don't always know how things are gonna go. When we say yes to God, when we begin to step out, we don't always know how it's gonna go. But we do know, as this song points out, that God is found in that mystery. And it's there in that deep that our faith will stand. Let's look at the next one. And I will call upon your name, God, and keep my eyes above the waves. And when oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours and yours is mine. Let's look at the next one. Because we find that when we step out into these places of unknown, that that's where we experience more grace, the sovereign hand of God who's guiding us, that where our feet may fail and fear surrounds us, that we've never failed because God is with us. And let's see this last one. And I love this one, this is my favorite lines. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. What a great line. Because you see, for most of us, we're safe and secure where we are. We're safe and secure with our routines, with the life that we have, and oftentimes with our trust. And this song is a prayer that says, Spirit, Spirit of God, lead me to a place where my trust is no longer bound, that we no longer have God in a box, that we're no longer confined, that God, that our trust grows and extends to places that we could never dream, never imagine, unless we step out of the boat. Because this song comes from an amazing scripture in Matthew chapter 14. But it's this very story that we sing and that we pray. And this story, we really see how 
you and I can make the most of every opportunity. And it begins in this way in Matthew chapter 14, and we'll have the scriptures on the screen, but I'm going to tell you about it a little bit. But it tells us that Jesus has just fed the 5,000 people. And then he goes and he sends the disciples off to the other side of the shore, and he tells them to go get into the boat, and Jesus stays behind and prays, it tells us. And then it says, as nightfall came, that the winds picked up, and then the boat was being buffeted by the winds and the waves. And the disciples were being, they became scared, they became afraid. And it tells us then Jesus begins walking on the water out to them. And then they see him and they think he's a ghost. And then Jesus says this to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. You see, the, the first step that you and I have to take in making the most of every opportunity is that we need to have courage. And that's what Jesus wants to tell them is to say, to go, have courage, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And here they are in this boat, they're fishermen, the waves are against them. And these are experienced fishermen. As these waves come, they know these hardships, they know this peril. They know what it's like to be in the midst of a storm. And they're genuinely afraid. And Jesus says, take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. And then we see this, the next thing that we ought to do if we're gonna make the most of every opportunity, and that is, is that we ask God. And that Peter sees Jesus. And he says, Jesus, if it's you, call out to me and I'll come to you. And Jesus says, come. And then Peter responds. And that's our third thing. We, as we ask God, we have to respond. And Peter steps out of that boat. Peter steps out of this place where his trust had borders. He trusted in this boat. That's what was going to keep him afloat. And yet Jesus says, come out to me upon the waves. And Peter steps out and walks on those waves. And what I love about this story is in the midst of all these of all the waves and the winds, that, that Jesus doesn't swim out to them. That Jesus is not coming to them in the midst of the trouble, but Jesus walks on top of the trouble. And Jesus says, come out to me on top of all of this. Rise above all of it. Walk upon it. And he invites Peter, and Peter responds, and Peter walks on that turbulent waters. Now imagine in our lives, Maybe those times in which we live, those things that are in your life right now, those things that you've been struggling with, you've tried to swim through them, you've tried to get new habits, you've tried to create distance, you've tried to, to get new routines, and you just feel like you can't get your head above the waves. And Jesus is saying, don't swim in it, come and walk above it. Come out and meet me, you have to step out of the boat if you're gonna get above it. And for just a moment, Peter does. And when I read this story, I just imagine what was it like to walk on water, even for just a moment. And then it says, Peter saw the wind and he became afraid. I don't know about you, but I can't see wind. I can feel wind. Sometimes I see the effects of the wind. But Peter was so distracted that he saw the wind. You see, if we're going to make the most of every opportunity, distractions are going to come. We're going to resonate with what Paul, when he's saying the days are evil, we have annoyances, we have hardships, we have perils, we have struggles, we have hurt. And we can't see them in such a way that they distract us from seeing Jesus. And that's what happens to Peter, and he begins to sink. But he calls out to Jesus, and Jesus rescues him. And when I look at this, I think, you know, Peter walked on water. He didn't really fail. He just kind of didn't make it all the way. As I was thinking about this, I was like, man, I wonder if there's a story, you know, kind of part two, and Jesus says, okay, how about one more shot? 
Let's try this again. Let's go a little bit further. Let's take four steps instead of three. Because Peter, I want you to know that you can do it. Because as Jesus reaches out and rescues him, and I, I love what he says, he says, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Because you see, I think there's a tenderness in what Jesus says. Jesus is not saying, well, you could have made the whole way. What happened? I think Jesus is saying, oh, you had it. Oh, you had it. You got this. I'm with you. Peter, know that you can't fail if you just continue to look at me and not the wind. And this is something Peter learned and lived the rest of his life. You see, when I look at this story and I think about this song that's a prayer and the prayers that we pray, I think about this, that when most of us, when we, we think about this, we can think about all these big things that God may call us to. We can even think about, you know, maybe we need to be in other boats and, and maybe we, we have to step out of those. But I think most of us just need to step out of the boat that we're in, that we have plenty of experiences around us, plenty of opportunity, that we can make the most of that opportunity. You know, in a bulletin this week, we have our own Harlan Sullivan. She's sitting right over there. We feature her story. Oh, yeah, give it up for Harlan. Yeah. And I love this. She says, you know, she is a teacher. It's not just a profession, but this is what she does. And she talks about how she approaches this. She says it's all about building relationships. And she says she makes the most of every opportunity by doing it this way. She sacrifices time and energy to let each person know how much she cares about them. Oftentimes it requires listening when she really wants to speak. It requires being fully present when she has so many tasks to do. It requires praying for each and every student before the school year begins. And even this, she says it means lifting up prayers that God, for the students that God gives me, because those are the ones I need to be a teacher to. It's a way of seeing each and every moment, each and every person as a God-given opportunity, and she wants to make the most of it. So I believe here today is that in your lives, each and every one of us, we have this boat. It's a place where we're safe and secure, where everything makes sense, where we have all the answers. We know how things work. But there's also this voice who's saying to us, come, step out of that boat. Come and join me upon the waters. It's a place where your trust no longer has borders or boundaries. It's scary here. It's a mystery here. But that's where you're gonna find grace and truth and God. So perhaps for you today, that could mean texting or calling that person that comes to mind. It could be making time for somebody who's in your life and you've been feeling it, but now it's time to say yes to it. For you, it could be saying yes to God for the very first time. Maybe saying yes to being part of a community, a small group, a Sunday school class, a serving team. It could be going and serving or maybe stepping out into a new career path. But whatever it is, live as wise, making the most of every opportunity because our world needs you. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you for this day. As we gather in worship, we gather to pray. God, we, we pray through the prayers that we pray, through the songs that we sing, through the scriptures we're looking at today to say, Lord, call us out of that boat. That boat of our lives, the boundaries and borders that we put so that we can love the world 
that we live in today, those lives that we touch today, those people that are in our lives today, and those opportunities in front of us. Maybe it's a new school year, a new job, maybe a new relationship, a new opportunity. Or maybe God's saying yes to you when we've always said no. And Lord, that's not always easy, but we know that you are with us and it's your voice that's calling to us. And Lord, we pray for our world, for those who are broken and hurting in Dayton, El Paso, in places we've never heard about and families we'll never know. And God, our prayers are with them. Our hearts are broken for them. But may they know you, God. And we pray for those who you're calling to go and be a blessing to them, that they would have the courage to say yes to you. So God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.